The following will contain spoilers for One Piece. Kaido is a truly terrifying and impressive villain. As the brutal conqueror of Wano Country and Emperor of the Sea, he is one of the greatest threats in the entire story. So in this video, I will break down the many elements that make up his character. Kaido's design is meant to convey a sense of raw power, shown through his massive upper body, his large club and horns, to his long hair and cape. The smallest parts of his design are his head and lower body. They make the design feel larger and more exaggerated by contrast. Kaido's design is based on a Japanese yokai known as an oni. He shares their iconic horns, bulking body, and kanabo club. His connection to them conveys a fierce and violent personality. He also happens to be the oni from the tale of Momotaro, which Wano draws a lot of direct inspiration from. In the tale, an oni is defeated by Momotaro, his dog, monkey, and pheasant. This battle also takes place in Onigashima, but let's go back to Kaido's design itself. Obviously, his massive upper body is the most iconic part of his design. On it, we can see his large defined musculature, giving his design a sense of confidence in his strength. On the right side of his body, we see a large scar, conveying experience with battle as well as his tenacity. On the left side, we see an orange tattoo of scales and a skull mark. A skull mark is of course a traditional symbol of pirates, a warning of something deadly. The orange scales are more interesting though. Orange scales are a common color for koi fish, which matches Kaido's fruit, as it's based on the Chinese myth of a koi fish that climbed a waterfall and became a dragon, showing that Kaido's base form is the symbolic koi fish. On his wrists, we can see spiked collars, much like dog collars that convey an aggressive wild side to the character. His lower body is a bit more decorated. Around his waist, he appears to be wearing what is called a Neo Daisuki, something that is meant to tie back kimono sleeves for work. However, in the context of Kabuki theater, they have a different meaning. Large Neo Daisuki are often worn by important characters. Neo refers to the guardian deities of the Buddha. They are meant to evoke power and majesty. His large feathery cape presents him as someone of importance. The wildness of the feathers add a spikiness to his silhouette, combined with his flowing hair creates a sense of chaos which matches his desire to bring destruction and chaos to the world. The chains he wears around his waist reference the many times he's been captured, showing his inability to be chained down. His large club reflects his very blunt and brutal fighting style, as well as his raw power. His long hair, horns, and mustache draw your attention to his head. It is a long rectangular shape and is very chiseled. The many lines on his face, as well as his lack of eyebrows, create a roughness to his skin. It also creates this natural look of anger. His exposed forehead allows exaggeration of his expressions by revealing his veins. His facial hair consists of his spiky beard and long mustache. The mustache is actually a reference to the whiskers of a koi fish, but it is also a reference to the mustache of Chinese dragons. His beard helps to separate his head from the rest of his body. That way his head won't just blend in because he doesn't wear a shirt. Lastly, his color palette. Kaido's design consists of browns, purples, orange, gold, green, white, and black. His design is very desaturated, which conveys the darker tone of his character. The purples that dominate his design convey a sense of nobility, power, and ambition, which matches his place as ruler of Wano and Emperor of the Sea. The warmer oranges and yellows contrast those cooler colors. It adds a little saturation to the design, which makes it more interesting to look at. Overall, Kaido's design conveys a powerful, brutal demon lord with incredible tenacity. Kaido's dragon form is a lot more simplistic. It is a mostly long serpent-like body with a dragon head of wavy hair and large horns. The sheer size conveys a sense of complete domination. It is often portrayed so large that it doesn't even fit in frame. The transformation is directly based on Chinese mythos, a form that symbolically represents willpower. But it is also a reference to two other Chinese myths, the Azure Dragon of the Four Guardians and the Dragon and Tiger. The Azure Dragon of the East is said to represent spring. Since spring brings new life, that makes Kaido a dark inversion of this idea, as his presence actually drains the land of its life. The Tiger and Dragon represent yin and yang, a symbol of opposites and harmony. The Dragon is the master of the skies, where the Tiger is master of the earth. This reflects Kaido's title as the strongest creature in the skies, sea, and earth, once again acting as a dark inversion, as the dragon is only supposed to rule the skies where Kaido seeks to rule all, creating a lack of balance. Moving on to the design itself, we can see that Kaido's hair has become much wavier. He even has eyebrows now. Its shape and movement creates a very fiery effect. Alongside the actual fire he has around his arms, it acts like an animal's mane, which creates a sense of domination and passion. He has also grown more horns alongside his massive fangs and sharp claws, which adds a greater sense of aggressiveness. 
His color palette consists of mostly the same colors but with a added dominant blue. It makes his dragon form visually distinct from his base form. Overall, the dragon form conveys an all-encompassing and threatening presence, a powerful alpha who rules the skies like a god and brings imbalance wherever he goes. Lastly, we have his hybrid form, which is a perfect combination of his two design themes. A popular color for Onis is blue, which Kaido's hybrid form is now covered in, while also matching his Azure Dragon theme. Even his tattoo has disappeared to show his full ascendance into his ultimate form no longer showing signs of his koi fish self. His design is much more saturated than his base form, keeping that visual distinction between transformations. His hybrid form carries his blue scales, extra horns, fangs, claws, longer limbs, and tail from his dragon form, increasing the rough look of his skin, while also making him look more violent and animalistic. The exaggeration added to his base design is meant to give the feeling of primal unleashed power, maintaining the bulky raw power of his base design by showing his musculature, while adding the mythical godliness of his dragon form, his humanity hidden under layers of animalistic instincts for blood and violence. It also makes his design slightly more symmetrical, creating a great sense of control and majesty. Overall, the hybrid form gives off a powerful sense of majesty and terror, humanity taken over by mythical primal power. Kaido is a name that means Joy Boy or Strong Kid, something that blew my mind when I looked it up. His Joy Boy name almost certainly relates to why he believed he was Joy Boy, because why wouldn't he? In a way, Kaido is a dark inversion of the idea. Joy Boy was said to bring smiles to people, something that Kaido does through the smile fruits but in a twisted manner, as the fruits give users fake smiles that hide their true feelings. Strong Kid is pretty literal, as it reflects Kaido's raw power growing up as a child. The characters that make up his name mean free and try, free reflecting One Piece's theme of freedom while also being ironic, since Kaido is someone who robs people of their freedom. Try refers to Kaido's incredible will as a character, as well as his koi fish fruit. He is referred to as a wise king by the people people of Wano, which references the four heavenly kings of Buddhism, reflecting the fact that Kaido is one of the four emperors of the sea. Lastly, there is his title as Strongest Creature or Thousand Beast Kaido, which of course references his dragon fruit, which I have mentioned many times before. Kaido wields the mythical koi fish fruit model Blue Dragon, a mythical zone which grants Kaido the abilities of a dragon. This type of a dragon is of course based on a Chinese myth, which I have recounted many times before. This fruit allows him to turn into a full and half dragon. His abilities include greater resistance to physical damage, creating clouds to fly, breathing fire, and controlling parts of the weather. His control over the elements portrays him as a literal force of nature, something that seems fundamentally too powerful to stop, as nature is the most powerful force in the world. He is also capable of using all three forms of hockey. His armament hockey increases his body's already incredible durability, while also allowing him to project his hockey outside his body. His observation hockey allows him to see and detect others and their strength. He can also use its advanced form to see into the future. Lastly is his conqueror's hockey, an ability only given to those with the disposition to stand above others, allowing his presence to knock people unconscious. He can also use its advanced form, allowing him to strike someone without making physical contact, an ability so strong it can pierce his dragon scales and split the sky. Only a handful of characters in the entire series have ever been shown to possess this ability, showing just how deadly Kaido is. Kaido's ability portray him as an absolute embodiment of willpower, being immune to almost any kind of damage, controlling the weather as though the laws of nature bend to his will, his massive dragon form dominating any scene that he is in, an ability truly fit for an emperor. Our introduction to Kaido shows him falling from a sky island, the narrator recounting his many failed executions, rising from the ground completely uninjured, towering over the supernova as if they were ants, immediately establishing him as a seemingly unstoppable force. During his intro, he shouts about his desire to die and start the world's greatest conflict. Kaido is someone who seeks a grand death, much like Roger and Whitebeard who shaped the Great Pirate Era. As the world's strongest creature, he seeks to leave behind a legacy. We know that Kaido once believed he was Joy Boy. After he found out he wasn't, his smile disappeared. It's likely that his desire for a grand death is to make up for that fact wanting something to prove he is still great, on top of the fact his former pirate captain died and was forgotten. As an emperor, he is known to have a crew of only Zoan users, as dragons are often portrayed as rulers of the animal kingdom, something also shown through the celestial dragons. 
many of his crew members being former captains who dreamed of becoming Pirate King, until their ambitions were shattered, something we saw as early as Thriller Bark, where Kaido's brutal nature was first foreshadowed. The philosophy behind these actions is that having too many kings will bring the crew down, removing all potential competitors for his throne, a contrast to Luffy and his desire to raise the spirits of those around him. The storyline even focuses on Luffy helping a fellow king be worthy of his throne, someone whose spirit had been weak until he met the Straw Hat Pirates. Kaido is frequently shown drinking throughout the story, a way to drown out his sorrows while contrasting his usually brutish attitude, showing a more carefree side to the character. But it also leans into a crueler side. The people of Wano only ever have one day a year to celebrate, but Kaido drinks like it's a festival whenever he wants completely disregarding the struggles of the people. Under his rule, the country has become poisoned and divided. In Kaido's mind, people are just tools to be used. In his first encounter with Luffy, he defeats him with little struggle, sending him away to break his spirit. But doing so only allowed Luffy to raise the spirits of the prisoners, giving them the forces they needed to fight back, while also giving him a new advanced form of hockey symbolic of the strength of Wano and its people. During Odin's flashback, we get to see a more honorable side to Kaido, having eliminated the lady that pretended to be Momonosuke, showing that he didn't want to win in a dishonorable way, as doing so is an insult to his title as strongest creature, while also acknowledging Odin and his wish to protect the scabbards. Kaido is someone with a deep sense of pride. Kaido's strength defines him because it is that strength which he wishes people to remember him by. During the Fire Festival, we get a lot more on Kaido, First, we meet Kaido's child, Yamato, someone who he forces to carry his legacy, as blood should be expected to do in his mind. But Yamato refuses his will and instead carries the will of Odin, as far as to even call themselves Odin, a complete rejection of Kaido in his forced legacy. Yamato's fruit is even the guardian deity of Wano, symbolically taking up Odin's will to protect the people, even acting as a mentor figure to Momo in his father's place. Kaido trying to force his legacy only makes people reject it, as he doesn't offer them the freedom of choice. Kaido begins his new plan, to turn Wano into a giant weapons factory to fund his great battle, once again forcing Yamato to rule Wano as its shogun, a way to keep his legacy of control alive through blood. But Odin's will continues to haunt Kaido wherever he goes. As Momo acts brave in his father's place, the scabbards fight on Odin's behalf to Odin's sword, which Zoro wields against him, being challenged by the kind of legacy he wants for himself. On the roof, Luffy and Kaido would face for the last time, Luffy finally being able to break through his defenses, forcing his hockey into Kaido as a symbolic act of recognition, Luffy's will being something Kaido can no longer ignore. This is the beginning of Kaido's respect towards Luffy, as he faces him with a smile. But advanced armament hockey isn't enough, as shown through the scabbards and their loss to Kaido. Luffy must be more than that. He must be a great leader. Odin left his country in its time of need, something Luffy refuses to do. A great leader must guide his people by example, unleashing his advanced conqueror's hockey, using his responsibility as a leader as a source of strength. His will so strong, he strikes Kaido without physical contact, symbolic of how your will can exist beyond you, just like how Odin's death did not end his will. With this power, Luffy is able to fight on equal terms with Kaido, shown through his splitting of the sky. But even still, he is unable to properly defeat Kaido, being tossed into the ocean, then being held back by CP0. Luffy is still missing something. He has the strength of the people. He has the responsibility of a great leader, but to be more than Kaido, he must become the one thing Kaido couldn't. Luffy awakens the same devil fruit Joy Boy once possessed, but Luffy chooses to be himself rather than address himself as Joy Boy, the opposite of Kaido whose spirit fell apart when he found out he wasn't who he wanted to be. This power shows Luffy's acceptance of himself, the only thing Kaido can't do. Luffy doesn't care for his legacy. He lives in the now, where Kaido obsesses over the future. His power being a cartoon, something that quite literally brings smiles, fighting Kaido with joy in his heart. Kaido's biggest failure wasn't just his leadership, it was his rejection of himself, wanting people to remember him while he could not accept himself, which is why his defeat is in secrecy, torn down from the sky. The people celebrate the lives of those they have lost, something no one will do for Kaido, their wishes filling the skies where he once flew, sent to boil as Odin once did to be forgotten as his captain was. Now a new dragon rules the skies, someone who was also a koi fish but accepted himself, even if he believed he could not be who he wanted to be, something Kaido could not do. I am not Odin. I am Momonosuke. I am not Joy Boy. I am Luffy. Kaido believed growing up that strength was all that mattered. He only knew battle, using others as pawns as they used him. 
In his mind, equality can only come from strength, but he only ever knew one kind, his own strength, but not the strength of others. Rox's crew didn't fall apart because of too many kings. It fell apart because they only cared about themselves. Luffy won with kings at his side. He won with the power of togetherness, where people carry each other's legacy, where they are a part of each other's legacies. Not tools, but fellow dreamers. It doesn't matter if the people of Wano never learn of Luffy's heroic deeds, because Luffy is someone who accepts himself and lives in the now. Because for all of Kaido's strength, he wasn't strong enough to wear a proper smile. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. There are things that would really help me out in the algorithm. You can also directly support my work on Ko-Fi, where you can give me donations to help make videos. It would really help out a lot. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video.